Soot is one of the most common and dangerous forms of air pollution. The scientific community refers to soot as fine particulate air pollution. It comes from coal-fired power plants, the cars we drive, liquid chemicals, uh, and other metals and fine matter. Soot is hazardous to our public health because these particles are smaller than the diameter of a human hair. So every time we inhale, we breathe these particles in. The American Lung Association refers to this like a, a sunburn in your lungs. And this leads to uh, an increasing number of emergency room visits, hospitalizations, and premature deaths. I can think of a patient I saw earlier this week who has emphysema. And he's been under wonderful control for years. But this year, because the temperatures are so high and the humidity is so high, he's finding that day after day he's having to stop while he's walking after very short distances. And we've had to increase the number of medicines he's taking just to enjoy his daily life. And last week, I can remember a young woman with asthma. When she first came to see me a few years ago, uh, she was having flares consistently and constantly. But with the right medications, she was enjoying a great quality of life. But with the rising temperatures and with the rising humidity and the associated soot and ozone increases, we've had to once again start fresh so that she can live her life the way she wants to. The benefits to reducing soot air pollution are truly innumerable. We know that after the Clean Air Act was passed between the years of 1980 and 2000, the average American life expectancy rose by six months. This will mean tens of thousands fewer sudden deaths thousands fewer heart attacks, tens of thousands fewer ER visits for chronic bronchitis and emphysema, 1.4 million fewer cases of aggravated asthma, and 2.7 million fewer lost days at work or school. For these reasons, it's critically important for the EPA to set strong final standards to protect people from this deadly pollution.